In React application, you can use context to store local data, but you can use also what we call stores. Stores are more efficient um, libraries that help you actually to store data locally and dynamic data also. There is one store that I want to show you, which is called Zustand. So I already made a video again on my uh, YouTube channel with Next.js, you can find it out. But what we're going to do in this video is to see how we can install Zustand and to share some data between components without having to create a context and to wrap our whole application. So basically here I'm going to install Zustand and you got to understand that uh, basically, the store here is just an external uh, place where we are going to uh, inject data and retrieve data directly inside our component. So it's really easy to understand, but it's really different from the context. Okay, so basically here I installed Zustand, so I'm going to come back. You can either follow here um, the uh, documentation on Zustand, which is basically on GitHub, or you can continue to follow with me here my description. It's going to be not the same, but it's going to be uh, just basically um, a demonstration that will show you how you can use Zustan. Okay, I'm not going to follow the documentation of Zustan. I'm just going to show you my way to create stores by using Zustan, of course. So inside my project, I'm going to create a new folder called stores, okay? And inside my store, I'm going to create a counter.js. As you can see, this is going to be a JavaScript file and not a JSX as we saw with context. It makes all the difference. We are not going to leverage React to use Zustand. Zustand exists by itself. Stores exist by themselves next to the app. I mean, on top of the app. Uh, but here it, we are going to see how is it useful to uh, create stores. Okay, so what I want to do is to import create from Zustand. That's the first thing. Okay, so I'm going to import create from Zustand. Exactly like uh, create context from React. It, we need a function to create the store itself. Okay, and what we want to do is to create a const and use counter a function that will create actually our counter. Okay, so here the difference inside it's inside uh, Zustand is that it's not going to be an object like this. It's going to be here a function here that will call here with a set parameter that we can use and return the object itself. Okay, so set here will help us actually to set the counter. We're going to see later how to use the state directly inside the component. Okay, so we got the set here. And what we want to do, we want to have a counter which will be on zero. And then we would like to have an increment function. And this increment function here will be used, you understood, to mutate the actual state. So here, this object, guys, this is the state. Okay, everything you put inside here, this object, will be your state. It can be as long as you want with arrays, with um, objects, whatever. Here you got your state that is here. Then we're going to see later how to import it inside your um, uh, components. So here this function increment will be used to just uh, actually set the counter. If you follow um, the convention of React user state, you can also here put a, um, a set counter instead, whatever. Here I just put increment to show you that you are not obliged to follow the, the convention. But here, there we go. So we got uh, increment. So what you would do you is to just put here a counter plus plus like this if you know JavaScript. However, you cannot do that. You need to use set, which is here on the top. This is the setter function that will help us to mutate the state. And this setter function is doing exactly the same as the function before here. It's going to use the actual state because here in this scope, you cannot uh, retrieve counter directly in here. You need to retrieve counter by using state.counter. Okay, so here we got state, which is coming from here. And what we want to do is to say, hey, we want to change counter inside this scope and we're going to put plus one. And there we go. This is the most basic explanation that I can give about Zustan for now. Okay, so I can type export cont counter and there we go. We've got a counter that is available everywhere. Okay, so we got counter and we got increment that can do the operation 
to mutate our counter just up here. Okay, we want to make a demonstration, so I'm going to come back to my hero. Here my hero, this is uh, the image, the notion avatar with here uh, the name, etc, etc. I'm just going to zoom a little bit. And up here, we already import our app context and you can use your store next to the app context. No problem. What I need to do at first is to import my counter. So I got my counter just up here. And what I want to do is to say const counter is equal to use counter. And what I want to do here inside my use counter, because this is not enough, I want to return which element from the use counter store I'm looking at. And again, I'm using the state. Remember, we got the state up here. So I want to return state.counter, okay? So now I'm just going to go down and probably after the description here, I'm going to put counter and here inside counter. And you can see here that I got a zero, okay? I got the zero, which is here because of course, I need to increment the counter. So here, if I create a button and I call it increment, when I click on this button, I want to increment my button. Exactly like before, I can create an increment that will use what? Increment coming from use counter. So I got increment up here and here I can create a button that when I click is going to increment. So I trigger the function and suddenly when I click, there we go, we got our use counter, which is up here, that we increment. Okay, that's cool. So here it's my in my hero. Let's go to my home.gsx, and I would like to see if the state is persistent, which means that if the counter is the same on every, uh, actually every component. So what I can do is exactly the same. I'm just going to call my counter up here. There we go. And I would like to display the counter. Okay, counter, there we go. And I'm going to put counter on home.gsx, there we go. So here we got the counter on hero. So I'm going to go down, counter on hero. I'm going to save and look at this. When I click, both of the value are changing. Okay, so this is as simple as this to use a store. You could have as many stores as you want and you can store as many elements as you want. Just you do the operation here by using set and state. Some last tips and tricks, the memoization. So you can use shallow from Zustan to prevent unnecessary re-renders. It happens often with React. You can do also async actions. So actions in Zustan can be asynchronous using async await, which means that directly inside a store here, I could fetch some data and update my store directly here. You can also use um, the complex state. You can manage complex state um, to use, par for example, Zustan inside the middleware. Okay, So basically inside the middleware, before we enter in inside your React app, you could use Zustan without a problem. The last thing is that you can create custom hooks and utilities that are going to use Zustan also. So you can have several side effects at the same time. So as you saw, creating a store with Zustand is very useful. It's another way to get persistent data inside your uh, React application next to context.